dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end and welcome back Last time on our adventures in Missed Opportunities Ghosts Salt Marsh, the party ventured deeper into the mansion of um, the mad inventor, Fritz von Wierk. Therein they found a strange chamber in which the... Um, forgetful scientist was trying to store memories in order to preserve his perception of his lost daughter. After using those memories to try to coax the uh, scientist back into some type of rationality and after Mariah gave of her own blood in order to fuel the machine they were given free reign to uh explore the basement the laboratory and everything they found a woman certainly this daughter the mother of um adelaide uh uh excuse me um whom they had uh, come to this house to uh to, to help her uh, regain control of this house. And they found that she had, in fact, not died, but was being kept in some type of suspended animation deep within this place, allowing this to simply continue. Whatever work this was, was not relevant to their mission. So they left telling Adelaide the house was hers but not before finding a few interesting trinkets and a diagram uh, depicting the strange helmet that had been imprisoning um, Dominic Donaire, the apparent rightful heir of Dementlia. They also found a crystal key that had been hidden within this room. Now, friends, you have all journeyed back late in the night and had an opportunity to rest and sit at the sea ghost your crew having seen you all leave for the uh, masquerade but you haven't returned until near dawn now so many of them are quite worried about you and quite relieved to see your return here at the docks so you can all take a long rest you have all been brought to level seven and mariah you have regained five of your missing 10 max hit points okay that was my question thank you <laughs> um is everyone just going straight to rest i assume it's people are a little bit battered um Prion, your max hit point reduction will also um, reset on the long rest. Anyone who has experienced that. Um, and uh, two things happen in the night, however, as you go to bed. First of all, Inaris, you wake up 
and something all around you that in the ship, the bunks, and it's kind of coming from everywhere, the cots next to you, and coming from your footlocker is a strange smell. Never smelt anything like this. Absolutely bizarre, like you you can't even describe it. It's uh it's 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 uh incomprehensible to you. It doesn't smell like anything else. It's almost <clears throat> it's almost like synesthesia. It's like you're smelling uh, the color green or something. Oh, so I'm going to I'm going to get and some up. It's coming around. from you actually. Um as you're looking around your 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 own body and something that's in your bunk with you. I'm gonna smell myself and dig around you, in my bunk. You confused. smell normal. You start digging around in your pack. Make an investigation check. Oh god. Investigation. That would be a natural twenty. Ooh, hey. good start. <laughs> start the night off First right. Of all... Woo! Woo! Um, all right, so that'll be more than enough. You start to look around and open a little pouch in your pack, and it's your money. And then you look and you pull your a dagger that you have out. It's anything that you have that is silver. You have this ability to smell it. Like, it's almost <laughs> overpowering every other scent. Oh, I remember you got a hint yeah, of it before <laughs> as you oh, drank shit. that potion, but because of the potion's instability, it manifested I about up. eight hours later. I fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up. Um, While this potion lasts, you will have advantage on um, any check to locate silver and disadvantage on scent-based checks <laughs> for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. How bizarre. <laughs> I'm going to throw my stuff down in disgust and just roll over and go back to sleep. <laughs> Fuck this. That's uh, not a bad way to look at it. Now, at the same, in the same evening here, Raya. Yeah. You wake up this morning, and uh, you're kind of looking around the uh, regular captain's quarters you have, um, and it's suddenly you hear faint melody being played on your violin. Yeah, I know that wolf town anywhere. <laughs> and you hear this uh, faint melody kind of searching through the strings. Like they don't, it's not quite familiar with it yet. The melody is. Um, Kind of just searching around and that and uh suddenly this woman with beautiful auburn hair wheels around and looks towards you <gasps> what are you doing in my room i same question who are you how did how did you get into my bed do a quick double take, just make sure I am in the right spot. Looks like it. It looks like your room. Um. Uh, Auburn here. Um. She looks familiar. She starts, um, walking towards you slowly, um, holding the violin at her side. Get out 
of my room before I call the guards. And she looks almost exactly like the woman that Mm -hmm. you saw floating in the tank that the scientist was, Fritz von Wierk, was trying, apparently, to save. What's her name again? Corinne? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm like 96% sure that this is actually my bedroom and that there are no guards to call. So can we maybe put a pin in this while I like go find some coffee or something? Make a persuasion check. Uh, Okay, 14 on the die plus seven, 21. Very good. Um, She speaks a few words under her breath in this sort of beautiful, lilting language. Um, And uh, you, at first you, you don't recognize it, but the words seem to untangle themselves in your head, like you've heard a language that has been long forgotten to you, but now remembered. As it, she speaks, it says, Ah, how long have I been asleep? My head, what's, what? And she just looks up to you and then speaks back in common. Who? Who are? And then she lunges towards you. She jumps oh, sh- over the chairs and um, almost lands on top of you um, in an aggressive manner with the violin and bow clenched in her hands. It's at this point that you shoot awake and feel the ship's gentle rocking. Looking down at your hand, the pinpricks where your blood was stolen in order to fuel the work seems to be bleeding through the cloth you wrapped it with. There's a small pool of blood on the bed. And your violin is in your hand. But you are alone. Dreams are creepy and I don't appreciate it. Um, That's uh, I haven't yeah. practiced nightmare. That's what that is. <laughs> Those um, of you walking on deck, it's yeah. later. It's late morning and you might have heard just slight wisps of melody coming from Mariah's quarters. Put the violin down very carefully um, and then kind of like bust out onto the deck and just look around and see like who is around. Kind of kind of doing that, that little sort of awkward like, did anyone hear anything? Was there anything to hear? Um, a couple <laughs> crew members look back um, as you burst out, kind of stand at attention, ready to take orders, and then look at you expectantly. At ease, gentlemen, enjoy your breakfast. (laughs) Turn about, head back right back in. They just shrug and go about their business. The rest of you all awake and um, can discuss your findings. As a reminder, you were told essentially that to complete your goal here to even be able to leave alive you would need to deal with the current reigning power in this place which is Duchess Cedra Donaire a person claiming to be her brother was discovered in Phlegatham Hospital claiming to be Dominic Donaire and this terrible, torturous device seemed to have been placed around his head, and he was put in restraints in his room on the third floor of the hospital. It blinded him, it gagged him. Um, 
and he was only able to speak after you undid a little strap and opened the mouthpiece just barely the same place that they probably would have um, thing they would have used to feed him he offered you a means of escape a means to take the evil item that you were searching for if you freed him And I believe we now have a key that looks like it might go to his helmet. Is that correct? Potentially, yes. Potentially. That and um, we'll just give we'll just give old Melvin a um, level of exhaustion as he stayed up all night looking at the diagram too. So poor Melvin. I know, poor guy. <laughs> Baby. Uh, I suppose eventually we all will gather. Mm -hmm. um, I've re-bandaged my hand at this point rather tightly and um, kind of clap my hands together. All right, so we got a, we got a duchess to take care of or whatever the fuck her name is. Cedra. She's not a duchess. Yeah. Is she? Did I make that up? No, she, she is. is. She is? Oh my god, my memory's okay. <sighs> Did everyone sleep all right? Yes. Yeah. We, uh... No, I'm I'm ready to go back to Salt Marsh. I've been away too long. You know, um, I really super agree with you. Um, and so uh, let's take care of this nasty business, lickety split, and get the fuck out of here. How do we want to do that? <laughs> Can't we just go and unlock the? The man's mask and sort of yeah. let him do his thing. I think aren't we supposed to take care of well I suppose that would probably be the easiest thing to do at this point. I don't really want to get in the way of Miss Pointy Dust, etc. That's fine. Okay. Are they just going to let us back in, though? Nene, hey, why are you looking at the plates like that? Uh, <clears throat> no, nobody else smells that, right? I smell the, ocean. Yeah, the vaguely fishy, kelpy ocean. Mm. Uh, ne never mind. <clears throat> Um, I'm, I, I, Elena having a little bit of a, um, brain block, um, was Sarayan actually taken for examination the last time that we were there, or did she just promise that she was going to do that? Oh, that's right. She just promised <laughs> that she would. <laughs> so kind of very slowly look over towards her, uh, hey, Sarayan. Uh, you've got a sort of a standing situation with, uh, old Flem House. Well, uh, a promise is a promise, so... I don't actually want you to go through with it. I think, I think if you stall... No, 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 like... my word is my bond. Okay. Yeah. Then What exactly did you agree to do? I told them that um, they they could just take a, a look around. Look around in your mind. <laughs> and a body. She, yeah, she um, gave them permission to look under the hood, kind of. What? Uh, what's yeah. the hood of what? <laughs> That's I'm. I don't know. He really wasn't specific, was he? The I don't wear a hood. That phrase came from. <laughs> Came from the fact that I like cars. It got a little. <laughs> it wasn't quite that creepy. What's a car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why does it wear a hood? Remember, there, Who are you? Saran would not have uh, agreed to do anything uncouth, uh, and oh. it was more. No, she's a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Well, no, I'm, I'm less worried about what's underneath the clothes and more what's underneath, like a surgeon's yeah. knife. Yeah, it literally. It, it I, means they like, told, looking they told... under her. <laughs> They told me that they wouldn't cause me any harm, so. Okay. 
Who did my words? My promised, bond. Who promised to go with you? Didn't you say you'd have someone go with you? Oh, Priyan, um, mm, uh, Priyan. Priyan said that he'd go. Priyan, are you still? You're still Aye, sure. Great. So, if they do harm you, oh. do you still have to keep your word? No, because then they broke their word. All right then. Then I'll just I'll kill them. <clears throat> I'll I'll kill them. <clears throat> That was aggressive. If she doesn't, Prion will. I don't know, you guys. Wave has been. I I felt really different recently. Wave is. Wave's really into killing people that that don't like a persona. So. And she just kind of stares off into the middle distance. <laughs> well, maybe it's time to get rid of it. Oh no, no, I couldn't do that. But, but, thanks for the suggestion, I guess. You hear this voice in the back of your head that says, It's much easier to just call them heathens. Simpler. Who? Everyone else? The ones that don't worship the way. Okay, the yeah. Way. Yeah, no, no, no. Um... Yeah, Wave says that you're heathens, so... It will make you feel much less bad when you kill them, too. It makes me feel less bad when I kill heathens. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm trying to oh. think of what the sort of pan-racial equivalent of dehumanization is. Um, it's not coming to me, but... Dehumanoidization? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, we might need to have a conversation later, but I think we have bigger fish to fry. So, um... <laughs> We're frying fish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I'm God. the hospital. <laughs> What's a car? What fish is on the menu? <laughs> she said carp. Uh, carp have hoods? Some do. You know what? Sure. There's Why not? A, you see a lot Look, of there's the hospital. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. wow. We're, we're here. <laughs> yeah, indeed you are. That conversation took the whole time. And, <laughs> and a really, really good conversation. Left and right, uh, the city of Dementlia. Those of you who are learning more about the place see um, there's a few more cracks in the facade than before. Um, some of you are now perceptive enough to notice that um, the way a curtain blows in the windowsill, you see it, an, an interior curtain blow through a window as if there's actu no actual panes of glass there. No beautiful, um, artistically set panes of glass. That It's just open air and the curtain that actually blows through as it crosses the threshold to outside. Beautiful crimson with... Um, with a silver thread appears simply brown, burlap, and threadbare, but for a moment as it waves its way outside and then drifts back in. And you see that for a moment and just wipe the sleep out of your eyes and goodness, that's a beautiful house. And it kind of returns to its stately, perfect, unblemished, uh, uh, way of being. But. Uh, go ahead. Is this the sort of place that we have to sneak into? Or should we just walk in the front? You can walk in the front. They're expecting, They're expecting at least two of me. us. Yeah. D DM, do I recall what the orderlies looked like in terms of what they wore as far as a uniform is concerned um you can see quite a few of them actually just walking around milling about um outside and, and in this uh, sort of outer courtyard here they most of them do have white robe like looking um garments um, double-breasted that button all the way up to the shoulder nether steps behind Prion and as she does she uses the hat of disguise 
to turn herself into a more human looking version of herself and with a identical outfit and she turns to Saray and it says oh you're you're overworked we need to we need to have someone take a look at you I'm overworked huh? yes you're the stress clearly is suffering from some yeah. some sort of nervous breakdown the stress is seeping out of your pores I feel fine. Do you though? Do you? Wait, wait, wait. Is this? Is this it's a ruse? Is... Sorry. Oh, I, uh, oh! I don't feel well at all. <laughs> Somebody, please help me. This this lady try. needs a mud bath, stat. Help! <laughs> I'm like a fish out of water. I'll sort of fan gently in her direction. <laughs> Oh, this is what I'm used to. This is to what I'm accustomed. Thank you very much. I immediately stop. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) It seems uh, to have caught the attention of some of the orderlies and such outside. You see two of them enter. (laughs) And then this uh, other woman comes walking towards you. Ah, um, are we okay? You you are the one that we were. I'm sick. Oh, no. Just what exactly are your symptoms? Um, she has pentapox. I have pentapox. She and it's funny because she takes out this, <laughs> wow, uh, this little <laughs> board with a piece of uh, paper on it and prepares to write. She looks at you with a troubling degree of interest as opposed to empathy <laughs> when she asks for your symptoms. She has. Uh... She hears voices. There's something I in hear her head voices? telling her I that she has to kill all heathens. I love to kill heathens. Psychotic behavior. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. That seems. She keeps talking brazen. about a car. We don't know what yeah, that is. Yeah. What's a car? Someone told me about a hood on a carp. Have she's you a tra- uh, car? She's a triton. She's been out of the water a great deal. A titan with pentapox, you say? Yes. Whatever they said is what I have. Is that a common condition from your people? Uh. I nod nod from the other side of the orderly. She kind of um, takes the scarf off. Yes, that is a common uh, thing. From her, uh, I guess, lab coat and wraps it around her um, face to cover her nose and mouth. Um, nose and mouth, and then... If you spend <laughs> lots of time on the sea, you're immune. Hmm. But not in not the sea, fr- Not if you're from the sea. <laughs> not if you're from the sea. Specifically on, on the sea. On the sea, not fr- in the sea. You have to be under the sea. Under the sea. <laughs> and you then see the, uh, with two other um, doctors, this man that you've met before, you recognize as Chief Surgeon Pierre Camus. Um, Hello, Pierre Camus. Doctor. Ah, our, uh, our subject has returned. How are you, Sir Ian? Um, I am not a subject. I am a patient, and I have pentapox and psychotic imaginings, and what else do I have? Carps. A carps. Oh my. Ooh. Scorching case of carps. We will need to. Well. Got the carps. Certainly examine then. Find the roots of this and. Well, are you aware of any treatments for this? Um, they are all minimally invasive treatments. Um, mostly. Have you heard of Reiki? <laughs> it's where you hold your hands over the body of the patient. Um, there's never any touching. It's just, it's a nice perhaps, sort of, oh. Perhaps you can give us a demonstration. I shall assemble the faculty. And, sure, um, Priyan, I'm gonna do Reiki on you. That seems a bit personal, but okay. <laughs> I won't touch you, it's fine. And um, two of the doctors kind of gesture as if asking if they can help you kind of looking to grab an arm and see if they can help you inside help 
Yeah. So weak. <laughs> And they uh, take your weight and I... gently start to carry you inside. You can be one of the ones. Yes. Um, All right. Uh, Nether. Priyad! Priyad, come inside! <laughs> I follow. Pinter Pox! <laughs> <laughs> um, please. Prepare an isolation chamber. Did I seem to patient. believe her? Um... She's uh, really acting very well. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> they're very eager to um, in the first place, but uh, um, go ahead and make a uh, deception check, Sarayan. Okay. <laughs> Can my offerings offer advantage? You all were quite convincing. and um, So I can roll with advantage. Gave very helpful reminders. Okay, so... And this is deception? That's correct. Okay, you were, so... in fact, lying. What? No, I have pentapox. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go to school. I don't... I'm sick. <laughs> A 15. Okay, they are not evaluating your statements very carefully. They're just kind of <laughs> nodding yes um, and... Even as they're carrying you in, you can see the um, um, chief surgeon as, you know, your sleeve is pushed up a little bit by them carrying you. You can see his eyes just darting across your limbs, looking very interestedly at the, f the very subtle fin um, features that come off of them and at your webbed hands and such. He is um, fascinated and even begins to start sketching on his uh, clipboard <laughs> as you go in. Sarayan noticing this will try to shift her body so that the sleeve covers her arm. <clears throat> that is indecent, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Make sure that her sleeves don't fall down again. <laughs> uh, pardon me, is there a, uh, well, you can tell us what parts of the body the gown must cover, but we would be very curious to see your hands and feet in the examination, as was promised. Of course, we will take care of in, your in, ailments. In the examination room? Ah, oh, of course. Forgive us. And they move you into the facility. Um, the rest of Fiat you is and... following behind, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Nether is and helping Nether's there. Way yeah. And uh... the rest of us are kind of tailing the group, and then we'll sort of split off upstairs as they. Yeah. Um, maybe um, Nene uh, with the higher stealth, um, and I will sort of take point, and maybe Talise can kind of keep watch. Okay. As you get in, there's this large entrance hall sort of a reception type desk and is that they, they immediately take you into this side corridor towards a um what you assume is going to be an examination room the deal was you could bring your friend uh please and he gestures some of his um senior what seem to be senior staff members over and then they uh look to you nether and say thank you we'll take it from here she tends Only to get so a much. little excited when I am not present. She has imprinted on... I'm doing just Waldo. Uh, she has... <laughs> she has imprinted. Oh, she has imprinted. She has imprinted, imprinted on me. I, uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> she has made some sort of mental imprint on me, and if I'm out of her sight, she she goes hysterical. I'll be sick. It's absolutely crazy. His she starts flailing her arms. Eyes it looks a lot like he... this. Uh, <laughs> he evaluates that statement. <laughs> Please make a deception check. Right. God. Does my dancing help the deception? <laughs> that is a twelve. Um. Can I offer? Can Can I help in, in the deceiving with my dance? Dance of Deception. The Dance of Deception? 13. We're making a 13. Okay, 13. Um, 
Actually, let me uh, let me roll this one myself. So I will say that as Nether says this, anybody who's watching her, she, of course, can't see, but she has her familiar close by to be her eyes. But as she speaks, you see her eyes kind of go from that somewhat unfocused milkiness to another creature's eyes, as if someone else briefly looks through her eyes as she speaks this falsehood. And she has a bit more confidence than you've experienced her with this sort of thing in the past. A little bit more adept with the deception than she huh. would have been. Because you'll notice I rolled a six on the die. <laughs> a five and a six. Yeah. Huh. And uh, he will look at you for a long moment and back to you, Sarayan, and say to his colleague, I'll take very detailed notes. Uh, fine. You can stand in the corner. Will that be fine, Miss Sarayan? <coughs> yes, that will suit me fine. Thank you. Then please, come in. And Is there a nice table with, like, pillows or something for me to lie on? Or? No, sterility is quite important. And you walk in and you do see it is an examination room. This one has um, what seems to be a very small uh, viewing area set up. So there are three rows of three seats. So nine seats in kind of a, um, uh, a stadium seating kind of situation where other doctors could sit and watch an examination. There is a steel slab there um there are some tables next to it and a long workbench filled with all sorts of instruments some looking absolutely frightening others looking just slightly less frightening um this is a place of typically surgery it seems like and uh surgery or dissection maybe remember that there is no physical touching of my body uh, fine. But, and he sets up this uh, sort of screen. Would you mind changing into an examination gown? As he hands you this simple cloth gown to change into. When you're ready, we'll be here. <clears throat> Allows you to step behind the curtain. You can see then the, um, he irritatedly points to one of the orderlies who detaches one of the last restraints that's usually on the table. Um, they had forgotten to remove one of the uh, uh, restraints. Those won't be in use. No, Correct. of course not. Of course not. Per our agreement. Do I believe you? Uh, you can make an insight check. Insight's my thing. The rest of you, 11, the door has been 18. Uh, yeah, you do. Um, he is eager, but not malicious. Um, as this door is shut, uh, based on the, the previous uh, couple minutes, I'm well certain that you all can delay the um, doctor enough um, to give your comrades probably at least an hour to get done what they need to do. Um, right. Ready! <laughs> she waves just a webbed fin above the top of the, the screen. Just to, in a brief da, summary, da, what is it that, da, that da, da, da. <laughs> claims as treatment for her pentapox? And upon, you know... Um, Upon visual examination, when they see no actual pox upon your body and bring that up, what is her answer to that? <clears throat> Serain is, I'm sure, <laughs> laid out upon the table. Go I'm imagining like a bride and Frank of a bride of Frankenstein situation, but without the restraints. So stiff to the board, and she's like, <clears throat> Oh, yes, um, it's, it's funny because tritons 
due to the nature of our skin, there there's no pox. Like pent up pox. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's more that um, mm -mm, I get very sweaty. <laughs> She's sweating a lot. <laughs> and they all nod and point towards the various sweat beads on your body. Oh, yes, yes, that's what, mm -hmm, yes, mm, yes. Sorry, She's yeah. very sweaty. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, anyway, a couple of doctors begin doing um, uh, extensive sketches of your hands and feet and um, sort of pointing out towards you and just doing as much of a, uh, a medical drawing as possible. Um, you know, they will ask you if you will roll up your sleeves slightly or um, pull up the um, gown just a little bit as far as you're comfortable with because they want to, um, they are fascinated by this, by you as just purely as a physical specimen. They've never seen a Triton before. So they are um, sketching like crazy um, mm -hmm. and just yes. listening to what's going on. Um, now, yeah. <laughs> those are the sounds that I, I'm guessing that makes. <laughs> Understood. So, Nether, Nether, you're sitting in the corner. Um, nothing looks really threatening. It's just kind of what was described. Uh, intense curiosity. Brian, you sense the same thing. Now, Mariah, Inaris, and Talise, you have been stopped kind of in the entryway to the sanitarium. What is your next Oh, I, I was step? hoping we would be able to sort of like slip in with the crowd but does that not is that not sufficient um you could you will need to make a uh make stealth checks to be able to do so okay let's go nanik <laughs> sneaky time oh uh, crack and don't fail me now about, about Ooh. That. Stealth. 24 roll the 19 on the day okay terrible this this kids is why you never use anything other than cracking dice. I rolled nat one, but that's an oh eleven. Gosh. Ooh, yeah, um, eleven with a plus ten. Oh, um, <laughs> you are noticed and stopped by a pair of orderlies as uh, they ask, basically stop and say what. You're not allowed to go up there. It is the patient wings are recovering people there. As you see Mariah just kind of walking up the stairs. Bye. Talise, are you trying to sneak off too? Or are you just... No, because I was foot? just supposed to be here guarding. I'm, I don't do stealth, so I wasn't even... They were going to be stealthy and I was just going to chill at the door. So I'm not In that case, trying. Mariah, you make your way oh, alone <laughs> off into up the uh Shit, where the did I third, put the key? No, I got it. up to the third floor <laughs> and around um okay. towards the third floor where you notice the multicolored doors That's same okay. as before um oh boy we should have decided on a backup plan <laughs> um all right i uh I'll head over towards that door and um oh gosh wait I can't I can't unlock doors guys <laughs> Nene what are you doing right now <laughs> what are you doing while I'm pondering you got pondering caught and was like told to my stay put that she can't go that way oh no wait You're... I do have thieves tools hot shit Okay, I just can't use my um okay. I was gonna say yeah. You I do. imagine yeah, that Nene is sitting in the operating theater, like eating popcorn, like riveted. <laughs> like hoping that they'll stab Saran. <laughs> just um, a little I do, bit. Indeed, according to my um uh character sheet have thieves tools. Um so I will approach the door, take a deep breath, think like Nene, think like Nene. And um use the inspiration that I'm sitting on to uh, have advantage on this check. So, have at it. Uh, fail me now. Ooh, okay, nice, nice. Uh, let's see, that's going to be uh, 14 plus 16. Um, 
16, yeah, uh, that is enough. You remember Saran kind of, or excuse me, um, Inaris being a bit annoyed at this lock, um, being more um, heavy than finesse in the way that you need to pick it. It's just a large bolt that is hard to turn. So, you know, it's a situation where you could easily break the torque wrench in your set of picks, but you hold it and turn it. You can break that point of um, static resting force and slowly then the, the bolt turns and the heavy, heavy click. The black door is unlocked. I open it a tiny, tiny bit. Hey, it's me, back. <sighs> Make my way in and close the door behind me. Mm-hmm. As everything Room is the painted same. black. The windows are tinged a bit red, and there are some red candles set upon the table. There is the same black grandfather clock. Right. Um, ticking slowly in the corner. Don't love that. Um... Dominic's just there. Yep, yeah. he is restrained to the table and he has the full helmet on, block completely blocking his vision with a gag that is All part right. of the um, instrument around it as well. I will take the key out that we retrieved from my pocket and say, hey, coming around. I'm gonna try to unlock this, okay? Just hold still. Mm-hmm. And I will try to see whether the key works. You do find a spot that oddly, almost magically seems to materialize for you as you bring the crystal key towards the back and inserting it in and clicking. You hear the winding of gears and a slight um, hiss, almost as if some sort of pressure valve is releasing and it almost pops. Um, uh, hemispherically, and you can see two hinges where you could simply open it up and take it off the top of his head. Okay. I will gently come around and lift it off. <sighs> he le he heaves a long sigh of relief. Now, um, I'm going to ask the rest of the cast to take ears off for a brief moment. Oh. Bye, guys. <laughs> Look, bye. Give me a thumbs up when we're good to go there. Sounds like we're good to go because no one gave me thumbs up. Um, <laughs> so, Mariah, Dominic has seen his better days. After so much time in restraints, his teeth have begun to grow quite crooked. His thinning black hair is slicked back, greased to his scalp in most points. His face is wrinkled and a bit pockmarked, and blotchy red rashes show just beneath his clothing. When his, lip, when his thin lips part to smile at you, there is cruelness to the action. His shoulders are slumped, and his beady eyes dart back and forth with a bit of judgment and suspicion. Everyone can... Guys... That was a quick one. And it was. Um, he looks at you, Mariah. Uh, here's my savior. Where are the rest? Doing their part to make sure I could get up here. Hmm. Disturbed. Good. Well, we're going to need an orderly or someone to wait here for a bit in my place. Why? <laughs> if they find this table empty when they come to feed me, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, um, no, It'll be right. taken care of, I promise. Okay. Um, Could you lead someone here for me? Preferably a male. I think it might be too obvious otherwise. That would love to attempt an insight check just to make sure that this is sort of above board as a as above board as something like this can be sure. uh 16. um 
as I as I said before, he has a bit of a um a sinister look to the eyes, but it's more of a um I guess cold calculating nature than anything else. Um it it doesn't seem overtly malicious. Okay. Well hang tight. And I will uh kind of get out of back into the hallway and uh slip down towards the stairwell to see if there's anyone maybe making their way up. Okay. As a, there is um, an orderly kind of bringing a tray of food that as, as he kind of looks at you, what the hell are you doing here? I think I need help. I'm sorry. I I, I, I was sick oh. over on the far side. I, I feel horrible. And I just take off down the hallway back towards oh, Dominic's I, door. Ah, wait. wait. Uh, and he kind of runs like, wait, no, don't go in there. Oh no. Oh no, I feel so horrible. I don't know where I'm going. He kind of um, runs <laughs> around the corner and um, just stands up straight, looking at Dominic, who is now just looking over the side, still in his restraints, and says, would you be so kind as to untie me, sir? And the uh, orderly just, yes, and walks over and just slowly takes off his restraints. As Dominic smiles, steps out, stretches his body, and says, Good. Sit down, please. And the orderly assumes the position that he was in, as you see Dominic slowly putting the restraints back on him. He then goes to open the sort of red curtains, lets some of the light in, and takes a deep breath. <sighs> It has been too long. Thank you, Mariah. Now, would you care to put that helmet on our volunteer? I merely raise an eyebrow at that descriptor and will put the helmet on the dude. Good. Do you have anything that can kind of gestures to himself? Hide my appearance. Um, oh, I suppose it's been a while since anyone's seen my face. <laughs> I mean, I've got an extra Those... cloak in my bag, um, though our easiest way out of here is just to kind of poof. Oh, you can do that. Yep. Yeah. By all means, Mariah, take us away. Okay. And, uh... Oh, I lock the door. Yeah, I will uh, close the door, to, or close the black door, um, relock it to the best of my ability, and then uh, hold out two hands to Dominic. He will and... take them. Despite his appearance, his hands do feel warm and sort of soft. Right. And uh, in our um, going to and from the uh, hospital and the various other places uh, that are in the vicinity, um, I would like to uh, dimension door us to a location that is um, 500 feet away from us that is safe. And probably in an alley um, somewhere. <laughs> yes. Uh, I will say that that is impossible. And so then with, with that, a um, uh, kind of a swirl of um, purplish energy, um, we kind of just suck into a kind of quick vortex with a little pop and reappear 500 feet away. <laughs> well done. Well done. Uh, will the rest be coming? We... We'll, uh, have a lot to do. How about we get you back to the ship? I'll go retrieve them, and we'll take our next step at that point. Fair enough. Um, and you can walk down the street with him. He keeps his hood mostly over. He 
gets a couple second glances. Um, he's not dressed in the fancy um, nature like everyone else, but um, you're able to get back to the ship pretty easily. Inaris and um, Talise, you see Mariah go up the stairs. You hear kind of a little bit of um, commotion for a second and then nothing. No one else runs up. No one else comes down. It is simply quiet. Should we go after them or should we wait? Or should we go check on Saran? Is it, she has, uh, <clears throat> she's got Prion with her. I'm sure she's fine. You know what? She probably is fine. And and you know what? I'm sure Mariah's fine because she's, she's pretty scrappy and she had the key, you know, so probably nothing, nothing happened. And if they got caught, we would have heard something. I'm sure. Oh, I think to the ship? To the ship. To the ship. To the ship. Uh, to the ship. To the ship. To the ship. Nay, nay. <laughs> Brian, what's your uh, passive perception again? Yeah. 17. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, let's just peace out. So we're going to head back. <laughs> the, after about an hour or so, um, you are the drawings, the examinations, and whatever are complete. Um, whether or not you've convince them that you still have pentapox or that you've it been magically cured. It presents itself cured. differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, they uh, seem I'm to I'm the Triton be... expert. <laughs> they seem to be sufficiently um, satisfied, at least for the moment, though, saying you're welcome to come back anytime and they would uh, do their best to make it worth your but while. Messieurs and madams and people of the medical profession, may I see your drawings before I I consent to you using them for any sort of Some of them kind of look between themselves and <laughs> one of them steps forward and shows you and um, there is a detailed um you've seen you know medical drawings before they're actually quite interesting the way that they um are drawn um that details your hand and whatnot uh, a couple showing your fins all in sketch and pencil and then some notes about color references and then there are a couple too that show your webbed hands and feet and your head and stuff and then just kind of assume what maybe the rest of your anatomy looks like, and that one they just kind of sheepishly show you, <laughs> like, uh... <clears throat> um, I would prefer if you drew the gown over the parts of the anatomy, um, about which you are unsure. Um, however, the rest I approve of. Thank you for your time. I recently had a friend um, write some things down and want to share them with other people that I was not comfortable really with pertaining to my own. And she starts to like go on and on and will continue to talk until somebody cuts her off and pulls her away. <laughs> okay. Has that ever like happened to any of you? Or like, is that something that just happened to me? Or um... You hear a voice in the back of the head, your head. <laughs> your sermons are getting worse. Uh -oh. <laughs> Shirt eyes begin to well. Um, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> she, <laughs> for some reason, because she's flustered, begins like bowing backwards out the door. <laughs> okay. So as you go, um, you see that Nether has gathered your clothing and is kind of waiting with the rest of your stuff as you kind of make your way out in the gown, um, the orderly. My clothes. <laughs> and she turns a deeper shade of coral. <laughs> And Nether and currently has changes. the rest of your belongings with her yeah. at the moment. <laughs> and you can all leave and rendezvous back at the ship after a few minutes of travel. <clears throat> okay. Hey, guys. With a new person seated in the um, uh, captain's quarters. Uh, now... If I could do a similar thing as the rest of you come to meet this gentleman, Dominic Donaire, 
for the first time. I need to speak to Srayan and Talise. Yes, just Srayan and Talise for just a brief moment. Feels like getting called to the principal's office. Rain and Talise to the principal's office. I'm imagining it over the PA system. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, something like that. Oh, I need Prion too. Jade. It's the water folk. Yes. Ooh. Um. Oh, wait. Uh. Actually, I don't. Sorry. You don't need uh, one of yeah, us. It's not you. I'm trying to figure this out. This is a confusing list, so I actually just need to talk to you. just Serene and Talise for oh, just a, a oh, for three sentences. Sorry. Okay. All right, Serene and Talise, you as you walk into the captain's quarters, this man here, um, Dominic, appears an unremarkable middle-aged man, about average build height, with a face not particularly handsome yet not unpleasant. His the smile face. is. Slightly Period. crooked, yet charming, nonetheless. His eyes seem earnest when speaking to you, yet when he looks away, you see some doubt and nervousness in them. He seems to have suffered somewhat physically from his um, from his confinement, but you can see where he was probably quite regal before this imprisonment. And that is what he looks like. The rest of you can bring back. And now one last bit is going to be those of you who have not yet heard a description. So uh, Prion and, um, and I guess Nether and everyone else has gotten a description, right? Nene hasn't? You're back. I'm back. But what? Nene ne oh. has not yet. Yeah. That's, that's Inaris is going to be the same as um Moriah's, so I'm going to send I'll I'll send yours uh, just in a uh chat here, Inaris. Weird. This is who you see. Okay, I'm putting my head. So down. just and this all right, this next and then we'll be back to everyone, I promise. It won't Should we won't I take be doing my headphones all the time, off again. No, you're good. Ne I'm just good. Nether and okay. um Prion because this would be the same as uh, Melvin would also experience this, but it's just Prion and Nether that hear this. Okay. So as you walk into the cabin, the man you see before you, um, Dominic is the perfect picture of grace and strong nobility. His posture is straight without being rigid, his expression regal, but not judgmental. His dark hair is swept back, maintaining luster and volume, even after all this time in his cruel restraints. His smile is warm, comforting, and his brown eyes are trustworthy, displaying kindness with a hint of playful intelligence. And everyone can come back. Whee! And... Dominic looks to all of you, smiling. So I have all of you to thank. Smiling particularly at you, Inaris, and you, Mariah. Um, and uh, it's been quite some time that I've been there. Ah, thank you. Well, um, sort of a um, mutual beneficial situation, it seems. <laughs> Certainly. Definitely not out of the kindness of your heart, but I understand. We have things needing accomplishing. And for this, I need another favor, but I'm sure you knew that. Cedra, sister, I, how long have you been here in Dementlier? Too long. Several days? Hm. Three, four, I think. 
more, more than enough, I would think. It include we we went to a ball that surely is worth a couple days. Ah, oh, so you survived the ball. She's just a pretty decent dancer. That she is. She's always been. Well, you see, this land, the way it's come to be, the sparkling veneer is beginning to crack. And I'm sure you've begun to smell the decay beneath. This is Cedra's doing. This is her. She is the mask. And to confront her in her palace, you've seen the overwhelming might of the illusion of this place. And the whim at which she can crumble the most innocent liar. Yes? Up close and personal. Up close and personal. Now, um, <clears throat> you could, of course, well, kill her like any other mortal. She is a bit more than that, but enough damage done to her, enough. Well, I'm sure she would die eventually. But to fight her in her own courts would be madness. I don't remember much, but we grew up together. She needs to be unmasked to be defeated. Unless you think you can use your might to fight your way through every illusion barrier at her disposal. Unmasked. I know she is just a frightened girl maintaining her power over this terrified land. So, I'm going to send you to where it began so you can learn, so you can see to prove who she is and unmask the host of the Grand Masquerade. Then, I am sure she will crumple to you. Sounds fair. May I borrow one of your crewmates for a moment? borrow mean exactly in this context? Just an errand, nothing more. Sure. Oh. Dragon! <laughs> <laughs> so, no, Dargan walks dragon. in. Yes, Cotton! And as... Send away uh, the one good one. The one good guy. <laughs> <laughs> as Dargan looks impressed for a moment um he then kind of goes wide-eyed looking at um dominic dominic gives a large smile I if you please master dwarf person. would you go fetch a carriage and he hands him a purse of gold and uh right away Yes, my lord. And goes out to fetch a carriage. Good. Now then, it'll be just a moment. I suggest you gather all your things. It's a long trek into the countryside. You coming with us? I need to. Have you ever ventured into the countryside or tried? I don't think we've tried. We got close to the edge of town and we're sort of told it might be a little difficult to get farther. That would be an understatement. But yes, I need to come with you. 
I don't believe the land will let you go there without me. But once we're there, you will go in alone. I... I... Don't believe I can enter that place. Not anymore. Some sort of Where emotional we... trauma? No. The way that the... Kind of looks around and deeply smells the sea air. The magic of this land, of this place. Whatever happened to it was originated in that place. And, well, it's interested in keeping the status quo for the moment. I will not be able to enter. We're putting a lot of faith in your word here, to put it mildly. Just how dangerous is it going to be? I survived it. Cedra survived it. Aye, but we what are you? Went back. Th Pardon? What are you? You're obviously not human. <laughs> We've met a vampire before. Are you one of those? He stood in the what? sunlight, Creon. He just looks tired. He kind of clicks his tongue Sorry. and then holds his hand into the windowsill and lets pure sunlight. I don't know and much about vampires. Down. Is that normal? Creon, he looks normal. He just looks like he's been locked up for a long time. But, no offense. But he did say that Cedra was doesn't more Doesn't even than look like mortal. he's been in jail. Well. He looks, he looks like looks he's pretty tired to me. I wasn't going to say anything, but I agree. He looks a little run down. Rough? No yeah, offense. worse for wear. Mm, worse don't be for ridiculous. Wear. He looks fresh as a daisy. He looks pristine. I don't know what kind of daisies you have in Saltmarsh, but... Um, I he does look fresh. I'm just going to lightly pull on Nether's uh, sleeve. I'm just going to give her a questioning look. What? Us? It doesn't look like he's spent a, a day in prison. He looks like he's lived there his entire life. You know, I know a thing or two about illusions. I think maybe... I think maybe we are all experiencing a slightly different form of it. Well, when I look at this man, I see a extremely well put together individual as at home as you'd expect to find with any of the other courtly people we've seen. Aye, same here. So what I see is the bare bones of that like if that were the foundation it's like it's like it's like a temple like almost like the one that talisa's god is part of on salt marsh that's just like you could tell that it looked nice at one point but now it's kind of run down you know what i mean interesting i, I see a man who's been locked up for oh gosh an eternity this is all rather insulting. Good. Sorry, what do I look like? So we can just, you know, even the scales. Don't. Didn't you the just scales. have people draw you? Sorry. <laughs> I know, I saw, I was like, oh. Um, call, it like, call, it like, call it an academic uh, curiosity. I'm going to put a small mirror down on the table in front of him. What do you see? Um. He picks it up and looks and takes a uh, lock of hair out of his face. At the moment, lost potential and wasting time. <laughs> it's only wasted while uh, the carriage is waiting outside and I don't see it yet. It will be here soon. Cedra originated in this place. It is the origin of her power. And mine, I must imagine. 
It is the ancestral seat of the people of Donaire, of the name Donaire. An ancient castle once stood there, crumbled, then a manor built, where my family lived for generations until this city became what it is today. It's where Cedra and I grew up, and we returned there later as teenagers after it was abandoned. And whatever else happened is blank to me. A gap in my thought and my memory, faded and forgotten, presuming only in a gag and a mask and a, well, dagger wound in the side, I think. So, there her power lies, there her mask was constructed. That is why I'm sending you there. Dementlieu forgets. I'm sure you've seen that already. There is the slow, insidious fading of memory. Happens faster here. People forget what they were. And then there is the faster forgetting, the willful oubliette that people cast unpleasant things into. All too effective in this place. No one should have the benefit to forget their own misdeeds so effectively. And you hear a sound of a um, carriage pulling up alongside the docks. So, I need you to remember, lest this city forget itself completely. The veneer crumbles. My city, my land, will not forget me. So, shall we? I sure. If it's what we have to do to leave. You feel like you need a nap? I'll be fine. As he smiles at you. Okay. Um, when he opens the door, kind of ignores Prion, ignores Nether, you know, helps Saran and Talisa in a bit, and then gives a cordial bow and larger smile towards both Inaris and Mariah, offering his hand um, to help you up into the carriage as it pulls along. When we were describing him, um, <clears throat> what was... What was the reading that we got from him? Like, was he, sh like, confused or was he no, hiding the fact? No, he was, he was, um, you saw him be almost disappointed or um, a bit of anger flashed across his eyes. Um, he became impatient with it mm. and um, maybe... Um, slightly defeated um uh let's and yeah it, does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah so for the rest of you we will be heading out into the countryside for the next part of the adventure is there anything anything wants to do anyone wants to do before stepping on this carriage and heading out yes Okay. Um, I saw your message. Uh, we might sort that out just a bit. Okay. On break. Fair enough. Um, if that is okay. So, all right. As the carriage begins to um, clatter its way across the cobblestones and out towards the countryside, go on a little wagon ride and um, we will go on our break as you are freed and traveling with Mr. Dominic Donaire. Cool. I love Dominic. Dominic. First 
session, uh, or in the first part of the session, the group freed the apparent true heir of Dementlieu, a, excuse me, a man named Dominic Donaire. Oddly enough, as um, the companions all uh, witnessed him, some saw him as lordly and beautiful, some as decrepit and thin and emaciated, others as just completely average. Um, not a thing they were able to sort out, but there is something uh, not obviously otherworldly about this man. And now all of you sit in a black carriage that begins to make its way through the countryside. Occasionally, you hear Dominic Donaire saying, Take a left here, then bear right, straight through the gate. Now this way, and he's directing, he's kind of looking out the window a bit. Now we've been going for about five minutes or so. Care to look back? Anyone? Or yeah, I'll look take back. A peek out the window. You've been traveling. You think you've left the city maybe ten minutes ago, and as you look back, it looks like you're only about a hundred feet from it. Like all this time, you've just been going down a road that leads nowhere. Not only nowhere important, but nowhere in time or space. The city just a few hundred feet behind you as you clatter on. This is what would have happened had you tried to leave. And if your ship tries to leave, I'm quite certain the same thing will happen. But we're good. We'll be fine. We'll break through in a moment. There. See the fog through that road. Take us directly through it. And you hear Dargan up on the direct. He's the one actually um, <coughs> driving the carriage. Yes, Master Dominic. Kind of gives you all a smile. And um, suddenly the countryside grows invisible around you. Um, you're passing through a thick fog and emerging into forested type of realm. Um, looks almost completely undeveloped. A few manor ruins lay scattered here and there, and you can see bits of stone that seem to demark roads at a previous time. But these roads are long eroded, disappearing into twisted brambles and uh, roots jutting out, threatening to trip or trip any foot or break any wagon wheel that would try to traverse it. But you continue on seemingly safe, going straight ahead. Gradually, the haze and brush give away, revealing a bald hilltop. There stands a grim black tower, the last defiant turret of a long crumbled fortress. Attached to this tower is a three-story manor house, weather beaten and veined with ivy. A porch girds the house, its sagging roof sheltering a stout front door that stands open and emits a flickering light. My ancestral home, Dominic says. Stop the carriage! And you hear, you see him wince. I can't go any closer. It's your turn now. If you want to leave this place. You need to get the house to remember. 
I don't know what that means any more than you do, but I'm confident you'll find a way. And he winks at you as he says this in Eris. I suppose we've dealt with weirder things. Shall we? I'll hop out of the carriage and start walking briskly up the path. I'll follow. So we've got to beat up a house. No, you didn't say no. beat up a house. We gotta make yeah. it remember. Yes. Something. But what, I wouldn't take it literally. What 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 should it remember? Evidently, whatever memory he's lost. Hmm. Probably. I say evidently like I know what I'm talking about, I really don't. Somewhere um, there's a Spaniard saying, I'm pretty sure we're going to be burning this place down. <laughs> We are not clown. arsonists in this campaign. Did anyone else hear that? The voice of the Spaniard on the wind. <laughs> Spaniard on the wind. Spaniard on the wind. Did, did, did I hear a Ponzi hat? Or was that just me? I bet his hat has so many feathers. <laughs> Feel it. Yes. Yes. Um. I at least if you want okay. to bring Ooh. yourself down here, this is where okay. the map begins as you approach the porch covered in dead vines. Every step that you take groans in protest against the weight of your feet. Wait, 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 wait. Is there a little boy and a little girl? Right? <laughs> Come play with us. Chase me, daddy. <laughs> no, none of either of those things. <laughs> Thank God. Oh. Well, I feel only slightly better. You know, Prion, I have the sense that one way or another, whatever it is that we need to do will sort of avail itself to us. You think? So yeah. I'm guessing we're gonna have undead or something like that in here. Yeah. Awesome. You think so? Who knows? Cool. Um creepy old house. I'll go first. Um I'll 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 go after after you. Whatever we have to right do in order behind, to get out of here. <laughs> I am right behind the meat shields. Uh <laughs> slowly walking and checking to make sure that there's nothing uh, beneath our feet or above us that might seek our demise or um so sorry i didn't mean to cut you off You're fine. you so rudely interrupted so just to... so <laughs> you oh did not gosh. you did not so oh, what did you need to say i'm so joking i don't know <laughs> um, i i'm going to use one of my um my beep boop 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 divine um, sense uh -huh. divine sense thoughts to divine sense but then also i have a fun ability Ooh. that's an aura of protection that i would also like to throw up i believe that's you always have there. that Hooray. Oh, that's level seven now you get yes you guys, guys get i get an aura, aura of protection everyone stay close to the paladin Within 10 feet, a plus two bonus to all saving throws. Fucking yes, but I will put up my divine sense. What color would you like your aura to be? Oh my gosh, I thought this day would never come. Um, I think it's gonna have to be like a, I imagine persona to be this like beautiful aquamarine sort of behind me. So it's gonna be that but a little bit lighter, like an ethereal blue. Puce. Puke. <laughs> that's a terrible, that's a terrible that word. color name. Aquamarine. Ooh, almost like it's a- um, A little bright, but- It's a whatcha, who's he, what's it? What's that, who's he, uh, what's it? Oh, that. Harry Potter characters have. Wow, a Patronus? Thank you, Patronus. I was sick this week. <laughs> Be nice to me. 
Girl. We're always funny. Missing. All right. <laughs> I imagine, Serene, you move with the rest Not of the crowd. Group. Yes. And you guys all move up to see the foyer. The foyer. The foyer. Le foyer. Le foyer. Okay. Le foyer. Um, Le foyer. Your divine oh. sense, you send it forth. Um, and you don't sense anything. Yet. Yet. I would open the door. Uh, yes, so, so the door is actually standing open, and there is a peeling wallpaper and musty scent emanating from this foyer. Curving staircase rises from the cracked tile floor to a balcony above, keeping its distance from a darkened chandelier hanging above. Doors lead in every direction, and at the room's center, a bronze sculpture uh, stands of a fisherman with a pair of lines in his hand and a grand net in the other hand. Mm. Dull, do you see anything in that corner? Dull would um, like to make an investigation check. Sure. Know? Or a perception check, your choice. What is, she's just kind of, he's just kind of poking around? Yeah, just sort of looking around there. Okay. Uh, perception or investigation, what should I roll? Uh, investigation, if it's just looking around yeah. there. Um, that's intelligence, right? Mm-hmm. So, 11. 11. Wood is pretty creaky and soft. Um, Otherwise, the windows are mostly frosted over, um, hard to see through, but nothing, okay. nothing here. Um, and yeah, there are doors. There are doors here, 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 and here. <sighs> well, Priyan, Anything? which way? Um, the statue, looking at that, does it look abnormal, or is it just a statue? <laughs> it's sort of, it's a quite a grand statue, but it looks mostly just like a statue. Uh, you're welcome to investigate further if you'd like. I will do so. Okay. Is that a relative of yours, Priyan? Very funny trying to figure out what this graphic actually is. It looks like, looks like a, a couple of a moose head, but what's that on the back? Scarab. It looks yeah, like, it's a sort of, it's like a scarab. A scarab and a moose. Odd. A moose scrib. Scarab moose, scarab moose. Will you do the <laughs> fandango? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's it. Oh. You won. You won Thank tonight. You. Yay. <laughs> Lightning strikes. Uh, Prion, just... I can do that. <laughs> I Normal statue. That. Okay. I will go over to the first door and open it. Okay. Um. You, as you throw this door open, um. A you are assaulted. Yep. By dust and moths and foul-smelling air. Gross. You're salted by salt. Is it Nene? Uh, it's a salted <laughs> peanut. Oh my god. <laughs> she, she gonna stab you. She smells weird, right? <laughs> no, she smells weird. She's, we yeah. smell fine. <laughs> <laughs> I would go and open this one. Opposite. And here... is a luxurious sitting room with a lovely fireplace and another door to the north and to the uh, east. I go and check the fireplace. Does it look like it's been used? Um, looking down there, you actually do feel some warmth 
by the on the stones of the hearth. This has been used. Like recently? Like extremely I... recently? Well, it's warm still. Oh. Are there Finally, ashes? luxury. And Saran goes and sits down on the couch. <laughs> it's a mimic. Uh... Um, <laughs> I'm asking Prion, um, although I, I'm Peter would have the actual answer. Um, are there uh, ashes yeah. um, in the fireplace? That's remnants of anything? Okay, from where you are? Um, no, I'm the, looking. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, so you're just touching the outside stone. There look to be maybe some really black ash in the fireplace. Um, hard to tell if it's recently burnt or not, but... Um, there aren't any glowing embers or anything like that that you see. Kind of lightly on poke initial around inspection. I'll kind of poke around a little bit and see if there's anything else to be found via an investigation check. Okay, in the fireplace specifically, yeah, or in the fireplace. Okay, make an investigation check. Okay. Eee, not good. Uh, seven. Okay. Um, as you're looking in, you kind of can tell the just by your motion the air excuse me you carry with you blows some of this black ash away and you're like you don't feel the heat that prion mentioned and you dust away some of the ashes in the fireplace and as you're doing so you hear a little voice whisper in your ear um it's awfully cold outside come stay warm with us and suddenly the fireplace ignites around your hand and arm mm -hmm. as you have been investigating in here into a blazing hot fire um it does so let's see do, 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 do. do i like get to dex out of that or uh Otherwise, uh, maybe not have my uh, forearm turned to bacon. It gets a little bacon I'm to the tune really... of uh, seven points of fire damage as it Ow. flares up around Mariah's <laughs> arm. You see, you all see her recoil back. Oh. Arm bacon. Mm. Oh. <laughs> uh, are you? Um, are you okay? It's my bad. bone arm. It's fine. Don't okay. you need that too? Well, Don't yeah, you need that but to it, it, it would be worse if it was the, you know, this one. One with the fingies? One. Yeah, the one with the fingies. Wait, both of the, yours the have fingering, fingies. The fingering arm? <laughs> yes, the fingering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's what it does. Anyway. I'm... Um, I'm ambidextrous, it's fine. I like your um, hair. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you think so. I've had the same hair this whole time, Saran. It looks particularly bluish in hue today. As you're laughing and joking with your group of kind of bandaging yourself, you notice that there are um, two just sort of iron busts on the fireplace. One of them looks familiar to you, and as you look closer, you remember a sallow bloated face bobbing up and down in salt water. Yeah. It looks familiar. One of the ones you saw recently. One of the crew. Uh, Tim, lean a little closer. Looking closer. The expression. It could be a perfect um, death mask. If it needed to be. Of one of the crewmen? Bargain? No, one of your crew from your previous. Oh. oh. I was like, that happened so fast. Uh, I kind of recoil back a little bit. Um, yeah, anyone else see anything else in this room that's interesting? Anyone? Anyone? Um, Take, I mean, taking suggestions. Let, at this um, point, I, I walk away from the fireplace. Saran starts Aww. to investigate the chair. <laughs> I'll With start to bone. investigate the room. 
Um, okay, Saran, are you investigating by seat, sitting in it or just <laughs> yeah, by... fully just by sitting in it? All right, it is plush. It's a little creaky, and the air that comes out of the cushion smells a little bit. Uh, make an investigation check. Gross. Butt check. You know, at this point, I can't tell if what smells is the chair or Nene, so. Uh, Wow, she gonna stab you. Well, she was already gonna stab me. I might as well just lean in. Uh, So 13. (laughs) I don't get it. I just made that noise for no reason. Uh, 13 plus zero is 13. (laughs) Yeah, it's old, but it was nicely constructed at one point. And as you sink into it um you kind of hear a like a sigh of sound from the air escaping it and it kind of goes your father already (laughs) assumed you're dead started prepping the next air before you even left complete your pilgrimage or not doesn't matter does anyone else hear that did anyone else hear that no you just see saray and like uncomfortably shifting around in a very creaky leather chair what is there a pee in it just said something really mean to me did it comment on your mouth did yeah, it comment? Kind of... Did it comment on my what? I I don't know. What are you? Why? What would a chair have to say? Everybody remember that this whole land and probably this place too thrives on what unmasking what is really there. Just I mean, fire obviously is real, and she s- throws a look to Mariah. But anything you see or hear, probably not real. But but wave talks to me and wave is real. But the chair care. said that my dad is already preparing a new heir. What that does the chair know? Assuming that I'm d- I don't know. That's why I'm asking <laughs> me will screw. Hey, Saran, I'm, I'm gonna a reach chair. out and slight, slightly wince because I touch my newly crispy hand to her, her shoulder. Hey, 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 you hey. smell like burning flesh. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's 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 a day for everyone. Hey. Let's not let's not think about your dad right now. All right? He's far away from here. Okay. Under the sea. Under the sea. Is it under the sea? Yeah. Yeah, under the sea. Okay. I love that song when you played it. That's nice. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she gets up and she uses Wave to poke the chair. (laughs) Shut up, you. Uh, He probably replaced you a long time ago, so I wouldn't worry about it. You're not supposed to. And as you, you, um, attack the chair and it actually the bits of stuffing kind of fly up and everywhere and it quickly collapses into itself and you hear the whole house kind of shudder and Uh... the flame burns hotter and brighter and then completely uh, snuffs out of existence so it's dark in here now (laughs) I did say, didn't I? I said we have to beat up the house. Um, well, I would like to... I would like to cast light. Okay, uh, you see Talese summon some light. On my little brooch, so I am now a walking beacon of light. Uh, There's a door You always were. there not, Peter? There is. I'm gonna take a listen towards it, see if I hear anything beyond. Okay. Make a perception check. Uh, nineteen. I was gonna offer to help, but I was muted, and now you don't need it. <laughs> um, you know, you hear that was a fairly average roll for me. A oh. um, like a single strand of a string instrument, dong, being plucked. Ever so slightly turn the handle and push the door in. Take a little peeky poo. 
There okay, are I found my room. overstuffed furniture pieces here. And a handsome concert harp, dramatically sculpted, Ooh. depicting a flock of flying doves. Fuck, I haven't seen one of these in so long. Walk inside. <laughs> okay. Min, is it safe? I'm a... Sarayan follows. <laughs> And makes this kung, nice little sound. Mariah, make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh. But you get plus two. Yes. Because I'm right you. behind you. Oh, sweet, sweet Sarayan. Sarayan's like Ooh. holding her trident kind of like menacingly at each of the chairs in turn around the room. <laughs> uh, you keep your mouth shut. 21 um you're the the sound as you pluck that single string is so so entrancing and part of you wants to just sit down and continue playing it and you run your hand down it and feel it cut you you see a it's like a paper cut running down your hand or on, uh, running down the finger you reached out with. Take Piper cut two points twenty damage of slashing damage, this but are not really compelled to, to play any longer. Ah. You okay? Are you okay? I'm not yeah. Are you okay? One would think that poking around the fireplace that then burns you would teach you a lesson to not touch things <laughs> in here. My curiosity is as endless as the ocean and as deep as a Baldur's Gate sewage pit. How poetic. That was beautiful. It was something. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone. I'll find my own harp some other time. A uh, couple more doors here, DM? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Take a little uh, listen, listen towards this one. And I will listen to the north one where I am. I want two perception checks then. Uh, I, I can do perception. Yeah. 25. That's cocked. Uh, 19. Uh, both of you think it sounds remarkably quiet on either side of these doors. We s s synchronize, open them. One, synchronize, two, open. Three. Yeah. Whoops. Oh no. Brian, you open up to reveal a long hall. Mariah, a dining room. Okay, whatever you do, don't touch a ewer. About to say, you know, do you see one? Why not? Is that a uh, firkin in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> no room for a firkin here. I guess there is. Um,. Chairs and candelabras are covering, um, well, uh, are, doesn't look like it in this, but are covered by dusty sheets in this, and a broad dining room table. Um, there are still life paintings depicting many grand feasts, but the way it looks is you think, oh, that's nice. You get closer and you can see that the oil paintings have sagged. All of the food looks wilted rotten and moldy it's hard to tell if that's the painting itself the um actual canvas and oil decaying or a combination of both super prion there is a door immediately to your left and to your right um is it just me that can see that green 35 foot DM thing. Oh, I see that. that. Yeah, I don't. I did that when I was trying to reveal stuff. I'll try to get it to go away. There you go. And, and now the initiative trackers come. You were up. just out of spell that range. Like... Actually, that was. Like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think I want to go in there, really. I don't have any... I guess. I guess Let's World 20 is haunted, too. Um, <laughs> I go in there and open this door. And yep. probably no doubt here, Mariah. 
Yep. They, you see Mariah peeking around. You see just a little bit of the light from Talise emanating from behind you. And I will open this door. In here, Ooh. you see a large parlor room. Dozens of faded portraits here cover the walls. The subject's eyes are fixed on a circular table that bears an ornate spirit board. A wide mirror hangs over a tall fireplace set into the north wall. Oh, is it that game where you have to, like, tug on the planchet? Wow. Jade, you hear a um, sound as something on the table <sighs> scritches across and moves. I will have a look. Okay. Prelim, prelim. prelim. What? You step in and... Just, just be careful. Something moved. I, okay. I don't really like ghost places. Can we be careful? You're a cleric. What do you got scared of the undead for? I just don't like ghost places. They always jump out. They're creepy. Why are we just standing in a line of the doorway? What's going on in there? We're lining up for a lightning bolt. I have a look. What moved? Um, looking on the table, there is this again, um, spirit board, which is what we would sometimes call a Ouija board. There are mm -hmm. letters and symbols across the board. And on top of it, what certainly is the um, item that moved is called the... I forgot what it's called. If, if it's the thing that the, that's like this... Called the, the planchette, symbol. I think, or yeah. something like yeah. that? Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's yeah. what... That's what she said. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's what she said. <laughs> A... You know, <laughs> a device that has a circular um, piece of glass set into it that illuminates whatever, or um, magnifies whatever letter is just below it. This particular planchette is carved with a number of arcane ruins. Ooh. I have a look what it okay. highlighted. Um, it seems to have moved um, just off to the side and is kind of slowly, ever so slowly, um, vibrating, shifting I would just a little like bit. to look at the, the runes and see if I can determine anything. I'm going to okay. cast check magic. Ram, be careful. What um what languages do you speak, Serene? Um, the languages that I speak are common, Elvish and Primordial. But right. I am um I was hoping to, you know, recall some knowledge from the extensive history lessons that I've learned as a young noble under the sea. At the sea. Okay. Um, you see a couple of ruins that resemble writing in Primordial, uh, but don't make sense in any language that you know, but they, they seem to be Primordial. There are also some um, sort of tentacle-like carvings that seem to wrap their way around the corners. And as you move close, it shudders and then shoots to the N letter. And it slowly spells out to all of you in heavy grating motion, dragging itself across the board, the phrase, not alone. That's what you're gonna say, fireball. <laughs> um, DM, uh, do I uh, sense any magic in the area? 
Maybe. Are you I are you just I, I cast popping it? Magic, yeah. Hard casting. Gotcha. No talone. What's that mean? What? I think it's French. Oh, what is a no talone? What's a hood <laughs> it might on be a car? No What's a no talone? No, no which is a kind of dessert. Mm. Oh, I'm hungry. There is I'm divination magic subtly emanating from the board and planchet. Oh, I don't like this. So it's magic, not ghosties. It could be right. bold. I'm, I'm going to pick up the thing and type hello. Type hello. It's me. Is it Prion you're looking for? Um, as you pick it up from the board, it just feels like a normal object. And kind of. And you go it around the board and you feel just an ever slight um, movement. It's like there's... It, it, I guess every time you move it left, it wants to go right. Every time you move it up, it wants to go down. It just... You feel some just general resistance against it as you move it across the board as you say hello that's all nothing nothing else happens but you should ask Priyan. a question Priyan. Priyan, you're supposed to do it with other people it's the <laughs> whole fun of these things but i was just returning the thing i could let's i'll do it with you Priyan. sure what are we doing oh okay so i from what i remember um and it sounds like Mariah has done this before. I've never had friends to do this with. But you can put one hand each on on the the little the little thing and you ask it a question and then it we ask the question out loud and it, this looks like it's primordial um like some sort of ancient primordial maybe um and then we it'll answer the question. But we all have to put one hand or fingy on the planchet. Okay. All have to. Um, I, I, I would wants... like to once again point out that everything we've messed with here so far has hurt us. Perhaps it'd be better to go to a different room. Well, that was only since, well, mind you, no. It, the fire. Did the fire happen before? Sarayan decided to. Yeah, it did, yeah. Um, DM, are the papers that are on the depicted on the table are they also present um, actually, or is it just the spirit board on the table? Um, there are some papers. There are some books in the corner as well. Okay. I kind of want to just sorry, take Melvin. A little peeky poo, <laughs> <laughs> channeling the spirit of our poor wizard, uh, who's sleeping burn on the books. festivities. I will never ever burn, burn the books. Bo um, he loves I, I want to look through the papers um, while Saran and tries to convince Prion to play Ouija board with her. Okay. I don't think that he needs convincing. It seems like Nether doesn't want us to. It, it I looks... don't think it's a very smart thing to do, is all. Uh, well, make so an investigation check, Mariah, to begin. Okay. Oh, God. I keep rolling horrible on investigation. Uh, it's seven again, oddly enough. Okay. Um, no, well, eight. No, whatever. It will take some time to piece through all of this, but you gather that there's a quite a bit of information here. There's a lot of things just about um, cults, things about uh, occult lore, um, hmm. and uh, and maybe maybe history of the house a little bit but it would just take take some more um if you spent time with this you think you could gain some information but it will take time to read through um i'll very <coughs> carefully attempting to avoid any potential paper cuts uh bundle up the papers that are here um wrap them in a extra piece of leather or something and mm -hmm. stick it in the bag of holding okay fair enough you hear the k -k 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 sound that the um, planchet vibrates on the spirit board once again. Yeah, get your head out of your ass, whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> Does the planchet look like it's going to spell out another word? No, it just kind of shakes there in the center for the time being. 
What I'm saying is that you, 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 you're supposed to have somebody's hands on it for it to spell out the, the words. Well, then, by all means. Now that might have a point, um, Saran, but if you want to play Spearford later, we could go certainly go get our own for the ship. I mean, do you think that this is just a, a game? Yeah, Isn't it? Just a I, game. I've never done one before. I've got no idea. I mean, that there's nothing that we could learn from this that's important? Ooh, compelling argument. <laughs> ah, fuck it. The spirit of adventure, I'll put my finger on. Okay. And Serene puts a fingy, a webbed fingy on the planchet. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Priyan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Priyan sets his finger on, and suddenly the air grows icy cold around you. The three of you can sense people, entities around you. The hair on the back of your neck goes up. It almost feels like something is something's breathing on the back of your neck as you touch this. You sense a woman in an apron, a woman in silver armor, and a um, man wielding a large axe. Do, do we see them or we just sense them and get like a, you sense a their visual... presence as if they're waiting oh to like answer like, as if one of them is waiting to be addressed uh, Saran looks to the one with the you said an axe yes um seeing that it's a fellow fighter um, all right, assuming it's not just an axe murderer, I don't know. <laughs> but um, Saran looks towards this figure and says, Greetings, fellow fellow warrior. Um, I, I'm Saran Alaranoff. Uh, what, what are you doing here? You hear the three of you touching it. Um, feel the planchet shift a bit, but just hear the voice in your head. Waiting. Oh, for, for, for what? As you asked your question, you felt that presence sort of withdraw from you. The rest of you still feel that you could ask a question, but you feel you can only ask one question before the connection to the spirit withdraws. So there's, no, there's a, a big warrior type. Who's the others, sorry? You could ask to the same spirit or ask to the others. Yeah. There's just a woman in a dress and an apron and then yeah. another woman in silver armor. Their features are not clear at all, but that's, if if you were to see it, you could see a bit of the shining armor. You can see the glow of the apron. That's about it. So it's a woman with an apron, a woman in a dress and a woman in silver armor. We it's a woman in a dress and Wo an apron. Woman in dress and apron. So I see. She's wearing so it's like a two dress figures. With an apron. Yes. A woman two. in silver armor. Okay. And then the one with the axe who you asked. So three figures. What are you doing? <laughs> you said waiting. Okay. Um, Could I ask something about Dominic? Ask your question. Uh, as in what happened to them? Well, 
Well, if it helps, I was going to ask um, what happened the last time Dominic and Cedra were here. Yeah, just ask him that, yeah. So is that your question or is that my question? I'm assuming it's just two questions total, isn't it? What are you asking, Prion? I was, um, Mariah was asking the question. Oh, okay. It's fine. I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, what happened uh, the last time Dominic and Sedger were here? Uh, the voice says, I failed her. And that's the axe guy, correct? Mm hmm. Okay. Not creepy at all. You're up, dude. Hmm. What was the task that you fouled at? Um... Uh, teaching her my vengeance. And then, since it's just the three of you, as you both have asked the question, suddenly, almost out of control in your hands, the planchet zips back and forth on the spirit board, spelling out... Um, a few letters as you sense its presence going away from you it says help you there's a pause then it says under porch and then after a moment the planchet the planchet zips to the side hovering over the symbol of a sword Do you guys think that there's a sword that was meant to protect somebody hidden away under the uh, what, the porch? What Why about the sword what that Mariah's happened? got? Mariah was given a magical sword. It's not magical. It's just, it, and I, I actually, I, as it happens, um, while I have divested of the fancy party gear, I do still have the rapier um, at my hip. Um, it's not, it's not magic in like the way that you know wave is magic. It's just made from magic. Which Does it talk magic to you? The <laughs> Fuck no. Oh. Okay, yeah. Let's look under the porch. <laughs> what all did you just experience? Um. Mariah, do you wanna or or Priyan? Um... I, the presence of three individuals, I hesitate to call them spirits because that's rather specific, um, who uh, one of them said that they failed her when I asked about Dominic and Cedra, um, and Prion got the specification um, that he was teaching her his vengeance. So, uh, a whole lot of more questions rather than answers. Um, but also there's a sword under the porch. Is this finished or are there more questions to ask? It's not clear to me that we can ask more questions. They yeah. seem to sort of... They went away. They just said help under porch. Under porch. Well, let's go have a look under the porch then. Seems logical. I head out to the porch. So you're there, the wood is creaky and soft, decayed. Still, there aren't any holes in it at the moment, but 
I have a look for where a secret hatch may be. Okay. Can Nether hang back and see if this planchette is done revealing things? Or yeah, certainly. I, I was planning on staying back because I had something to uh, say as well, but I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Yeah, it sits motionless. As Prion goes out, Prion, you can make an investigation check. Oh, God. Plus zero. It's cocked. What a Fourteen. Day to have Melvin. <laughs> Fourteen. Yeah. Um, looking, you don't see any secret hatch or anything. You can see the space between the boards a little bit, and there does seem to be some space down there, but um, no hatch or anything like that. Um, I go and have a look. I go down and underneath. Okay. Yeah. As you go. Um, around you see there's about two and a half feet between the porch and the um, ground and that maybe if you were to crawl under there I get on my hands and knees and just look underneath first to see if I can see anything as my eyes are usually better than searching around yeah yeah okay in that case make a perception check down, down, down. We'll get plus seven to that at least. Oh, for fuck's sake. Natural one. Eight. <laughs> Eight. Um, ooh, a lot of dirt down here, but, uh, you know, you can oh, always crawl under the and My eyes are check closed. around closer. <laughs> I get underneath. I crawled underneath. You guys see Prion disappear under the porch. Um, Prion, you'll have to be pretty much prone to do this, to mm -hmm. crawl all the way under. Prion, where are you going? Under the porch. Ma <sighs> okay. Is the um, planchette still uh, and board still radiating divination magic? Yes. As you hear the um, the cleric folk and Prion kind of yelling outside the front, <laughs> the planchette has gone completely still. Uh, Prion crawling under here since you're getting all your body in you kind of crawl around for a little bit and you find a spot that looks like more like um, dusty tilled earth kind of towards the actual where you think the doorway would be where it's right under the basically the, the door sill okay does it look the size of a body uh it's about Eight feet long and four feet wide. Hmm. Loose earth. You see gray dust on top of it, and you see dozens, if not hundreds, of husks of dead bugs. It's like fall leaves. Is that natural? No. You can tell immediately it is not. Have I any idea of what could have caused that using survival? Uh, you can make a survival check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus seven to that as well. Ooh, that's better. 24. 24. Tw 23. Um, sorry. It's possible that these creatures were drawn to some sort of decay, um, but there seems to be some type of greater um, happening going on here because, as I said before, a survival, you know this is not natural. This is strange. This is beyond normal. Does it smell like death? A decay. <laughs> not as much anymore. No. It smells dry. Dusty. I will start digging. Okay. If I can. The dusty earth. You're able to pull it away more easily than you'd think. And you guys all hear Creon digging down beneath the front porch. It's about a minute or two, Prion. You feel like the, it's still dusty. The earth is still pliable. 
You reach something solid. It feels like a piece of metal, maybe a, a piece of solid wood. And um, as you reach or, uh, reach down, reach around, pull it, you see a haft. And pulling it, dislodging it from the earth, there seems to be a large axe down here beneath the ground. It is beautiful workmanship you can see already, though strange uh, design. Um, it is the blade itself, the face of the blade is embossed with these demonic toads that seem to be salivating excessively. But as you pull it up, the blade itself becomes almost instantly clean, just shedding off any of the dust. There is an immense quality to this weapon. And you feel a little itch, kind of this dust getting all over you, and you look and see something crawling into the um, uh, break in your armor, and then something else. You just feel itchy, and you look and see all over where you've been digging dozens, dozens, hundreds of maggots have come alive in the dust and started crawling over your skin. Yeah. And um Chelsea, can you mute your mic? Yes. Angry typing. I guess the three of you out here to start will need to roll some initiatives. Ah! Priyan, you are beneath the uh, thing. I don't anticipate this will be everyone, but um yeah, maybe it will be. In here. <laughs> uh, just Let's quickly start, as well, MCR music <laughs> as reclaimed a D20 for 600 gold. So does anyone need an Woo! inspiration? Thank you Ready. very much, MCR music. I uh, don't have it. I do. You don't have one? So I don't have one either. Peter, just, yeah. Well, just two, you roll off. Okay. The two of us? Uh, no. I think it's just Talise and um, Mariah. And me. And the DM. And, and me. Oh, and. No, not me. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. I beat Peter. That's all that matters. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yay. I'm not a bother. Thank you very much, MCR Music. Uh, thank you. Advantage. Oh, my God. Rolling really high. Those oh, are some really low there, rolls. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Serene, like had that. you gone out there to the porch or were you back in the seance room? I would have gone with Priyan to the porch. Okay. That's gross. Yeah, it is. There's some good art to go <sighs> with it. Oh, I hate that. Lovely. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. Thanks, I hate <laughs> it. Why is he on top of me? I don't like that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right. Oh, it suddenly got much smaller. It is more medium-sized. Okay. All right. It actually is. It's large. There we no. go. Okay. Uh, so we're on the board here. Um, Prion. Yes. They start to cover you, and you realize something is going to be wrong very quickly. Um, Inaris. It is your turn to act. All the concern. But seeing giant creepiness. You actually can't see it. You just uh, hear Priyan be like, uh, um, uh, 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 oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, Prion, are, are you okay down there? Nope. Gonna need more than a note, buddy. <laughs> what you doing, Daenerys? 
Uh, I'm gonna go down there with him, I guess, and see what's going on. Okay, you can get over the side. Um, okay. You have dark vision. Uh, Prion has dug himself down into a little hole, so as you peek down, you just see a bunch of dirt. Okay. I will, as long as I still have the movement, I'll uh, jump down and sort of start to crawl in behind him. Okay. Uh, you can make it all the way over there um, if you use your bonus action to dash, but you will be prone yeah. and crawling. Okay. Anything with your action. You can get over there and you see Prion down in a hole covered. It's almost hard to see his face. His entire body is covered with maggots. Uh, if I can use an action. I want you... Is there any way I can use my fairy fire to... I have to I have to see what I hit with the fairy fire, don't I? You do, but it's covering Prion right now, so. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna line the bugs both. things in fairy fire. Okay, so but you can can't tar you, if you put it, if you put the bugs in a box, it's gonna be on Prion too. They're all over him. Do well, he'll have to make a save. Right, right. Yeah. So you're welcome to try, but it would you you cannot target just the bugs with the fairy fire. Okay. Uh oh shit. I'm gonna I'll I'll try. <laughs> it doesn't do any right. damage, it's mostly just so I can tell where they are. And Prion's prone anyway. Um Alright, Prion make a save. Disadvantage, I believe. Yep. <laughs> You're well, both pretty you and purple. the things are lit up in the in the um, in the light, so they did get lit up. Okay. But uh, now they have two targets, and will spread across you and Eris and Prion. And so now, make... now they have advantage to hit me. Nice. And they have an advantage to hit an Eris anyway too. Um. Let's see. I have a. 21 to hit Prion and a 17 to hit Daenerys. I will cast shield. All right. And Daenerys? No, that definitely hits. All right. Um, take 14 points of piercing damage and make a constitution saving throw. Well two if you're concentrating. Ooh! 20. Dirty 20. Yep. Spell stays up. Make another one. Uh, 12. Okay. Cool. Oh, apparently there's no disadvantage for deck saves if I'm prone. No, I guess not. All right, Prion, your turn. It would have been 18 then. That's fine. Still a okay. success. So I'm not very fired. Okay, I put out a dagger. And I will attack. I will cast Booming Blade on this creature. Okay. And it's very fired. I'm just going to do it on the computer. It's so much easier for this sort of thing. 24 to hit. Hits. With a booming well, blade. You would have, it would be regular roll, but 14 still hits. What, even You're with prone. a light? Uh, with a dagger? Does that, is that still? Any melee attack oh, while okay. prone is disadvantage. Okay, 14 then. Um, hits. Uh, one second, booming blade. For two damage, and then I attack it again. Oh, uh, you can't. Uh, oh, do you have that feature now? Yes, I do. Oh, cool. Mm. Eleven. Eleven misses. And I start crawling out. Okay. Do you crawl? You crawl away from it? Yeah. 
All right, attacks you again. Uh, hits a nine, so misses. All right. How far did, out did I get? Uh, you can move at. You can basically get to there with your movement. Okay. Exactly where you are. And we're at Tulis. Um, I should have. Well, I won't second guess. I think Sorry, I guys. got skipped. You may have. I didn't get everyone in the initiative order. Um, and okay. I anticipated it. Uh, uh, anyway. What was your initiative, Sarayan? Six. All right. Sarayan, you're up. Mm-hmm. And second round, Mariah and... Um, uh, um, sorry, Nether would be able to join if you guys want to roll an initiative. Um, as you begin okay. to hear spells being cast outside. So Prion has been able to shake off all these maggots and is crawling away from them? He is, yes. Okay. Um, so Sarayan will go towards this icky maggoty guy. Um, so I, I, this is a little hard to see, but these are actually under okay. the um, porch. Under the floorboards? Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I guess that the best thing I can do is try to help Creon get out of there. So is it possible to like okay. move? He has just sort of army crawled his way out and has just appeared on the other side of the porch um, and okay. is still prone. Oh, okay. 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 Um... Um, Have I still got the axe with me? Or? Yeah, yeah, you can pick. You can have picked up the axe. Hmm. I'm trying to see if there's anything I can do to help help Freon. You can pick me up. I'll pick him up. You could use your action to pick him up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hoist him up to his feet. Yes. Anything else? Mm. Um creepy crawlies so, underneath. So that'll be my action. Uh for my bonus action, I will utter a prayer and um expend a spell slot for divine favor. Okay. What does that do? Um, it adds an extra 1d4 radiant damage on a hit to my weapon attacks. Okay. Until the spell ends after about a minute. Now it is Talisa's turn. Um, so the maggots are still under the floorboards. That's correct. Okay. Um, I would like to mm, Could I would you let me cast sacred flame at the floor to try to burn through the wood? Yes, you could do that. I would like to do that, sir. Well, does it say you target a creature actually? A creature, it's, I believe. It also does radi- it also does radiant damage, but it would still kind of damage hoping. the wood. What does it say, Talise? Or, it yeah. says creature. That's why I. Yeah. Asked. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> that's why I was like, "Will you let me do it?" There are you other things you could do to break yeah, out yeah. the floor, but you can there have a look other... underneath and do it. Yeah, you could do that. Sandy line of sight. No cover from benefit, so or no uh, benefit from cover. <laughs> no cover. There's no cover from benefit here. Then yes, I guess I will hop down. Ugh, my mouse is freaking out. I will hop down. Past the railing, then. Yep. And you can see, look down see and see it now. as they're kind of swarming up now, the part out of the way, and rolling a 15 on their deck save, and your radiant energy comes down and they are unaffected. Bastards. Anything else you'd like to do? <sighs> no. Inaris, you are down there, you are covered by them and entangled by them. Not entangled, but they're just all over you. I just never can remember to mute or unmute. So they are all over me. Mm hmm. Okay. 
Oh, second round. It would have been Mariah first. I apologize. Huh? Right. Yeah, you can let her go They're first. all over you, Inaris. Think about what okay. you're going to do about that while Mariah yeah, takes a turn. You. you hear the commotion, some spells being cast outside. and mm -hmm. Looking up from Nether and the uh, spirit board. Oh, shit. What did they get into this time? Um, I'll run out to this point. Um, I guess I can kind of see that their attention is down below, but not what exactly is happening. Um, can I hear um, uh, Nene struggling? Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, okay. Prion would, I know Serayan is, I think, down because she helped Prion up, yeah. and you can probably see them pointing underneath the floorboards. Like. Okay. I. Uh, Nene, shake it off. You got this, kiddo. And have a bardic inspiration. Yay! And, um... I'm just gonna... I'm gonna hold in a... Dodge, I guess. Okay. And then it will be Inaris' turn. Awesome! I am, since I'm down and covered in these little creepy crawlies, I want to attempt to cast uh, Word of Radiance. Cool. Put that in there so we can see what it does. I don't think I've used my Word of Radiance yet. So as uh, I'm laying there trying unsave. to get these. Oh, sweet. It makes a con save. It has failed with an eight. Yes. Okay. Each That's 2d6 damage. Let's see within range. Awesome. So 10 points of radiant damage. Nice. A few of them burn off. <laughs> Seems the swarm has lessened in intensity. action i will continue to try to get away from them okay uh are you bonus action disengaging and crawling away what's your plan uh bonus action and disengaging okay in that case you can get about as far as you are same distance as prion use it as you are but you are still prone on the ground um as you let force those divine words you can feel this vibration rise from the earth in response and um looking about you see a few more bugs come from the earth you think but then you see dozens and dozens of fingers just crawling their way up through the dirt on the Thanks. ground mostly in the location over by the tower here Um, and it's Nether's turn. Oh, did it not move or anything? Huh? It's not its turn. Oh, yeah. This is just a. Oh, yeah. This Sorry, is yeah. just an environmental effect that's happening. Bizarre. Um, it is. Yeah, like right. This location here seems to be just kind of a swarming. The earth seems to be falling in on itself, and you can see fingers almost like mining from below are um, sort of swollen claws, hands, etc. Mouths gasping, consuming dirt. So, yeah. Nether runs in front of the uh, statue, and as she does, she sort of uh, puts her hand over her uh, heart and summons her infernal heritage and casts armor of Agathis. That is her turn. Okay. The swarm, still fairy fired, slithers out and makes attacks against Prion and Eris. It takes six thunder damage. 
Ooh, it does, doesn't it? Boom. And some more of them fall away. The strength is lessening. Um, I have a 15 against Prion, and I have a uh, natural 20 with advantage against Inaris. Um, thankfully, they are only at half power. Otherwise, it would have been 28 um, points of damage. I think I can take an attack of opportunity, I believe. Yeah, I think you can. Um, am I holding my... Uh, 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 my trident or am I holding the axe it sounds like you're holding the axe and a dagger unless you swapped yeah okay uh, so what's the axe it's a uh, a d8 at, or a versatile one you could drop the dagger use it two handed if you wanted two, two handed yeah yeah it um, feels good in your hands I'll just do the hit with a trident 21. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll crit fish. Hang on. 23. Definitely hits. Um, right, I need to... So, go to the next person. I'll... Okay. I need uh, the to... next... They do hit um, Inaris, dealing um, 15 points of... That's a great axe, um, yeah? Just a regular... A battle axe. Oh, battle axe. Okay. D10. And... Uh, so, 15 points on the crit and another con save. That is a six. Gotcha. Noted. Cool. And the rumbly... So, pre on your strike... Plus the other damage yeah. decimates the rest of the swarm. Oh, right. As on its turn, emerging from this piece of earth, you see a couple, a pair of shoulders with a head lolled to the side and more arms. And it looks like just a grave, maybe a mass grave has arisen in this spot. And you've seen swarms of undead before you know they sometimes stick together especially the zombie type but then you see even more come up and it gr the swarm seems to grow in stature these zombies seem to be stuck together perhaps or at least congealed in some strange way this is no mere swarm of zombies this is a zombie clot ah uh, I not thought you were going to say zombie two words. Not two words I ever expected to hear back to back. One of my favorite things for the book. <laughs> it's it's cool. I don't, so awesome. I don't I don't Dislike. like this. <laughs> a zombie clot. I want to shake the hand of whoever figured it. that out. It's not a zombie swarm. It's a zombie clot. That's the worst I thing ever. I hate it. Um... And you, oh, um, speaker of um, divine things, it seems to be com very much offended by your speech, Talise. And it really? uh, seems to, it's 30 feet from you, and it looks like it's going to swing at you. And as its hand comes forward, a chunk of undead flesh congealed together launches at you. And... Oh splatters itself across your body. Please make a strength saving throw. Gross, oh gross, my gross, god. Gross, gross. Thank you for the nightmares, Peter. Cool. I got a four. <laughs> you find yourself completely covered by it. You can see Wait. nothing as you are now inside a writhing mass of zombie flesh and you can no. feel teeth against no. your neck. Claws against your skin as they begin to slowly eat you from within this clump. Peter! Uh, after you take 15 points of bludgeoning damage, you are uh, restrained. I'm blinded. I'm still unhappy right now. And you guys cannot see uh, Talise, by the way. She is completely oh, disappeared beneath a clump of writhing zombie mass. Ew. <laughs> uh, it is Sarayan's turn. 
Yeah, what a what a fun twist. Um, so let's see. I. Uh, beans, 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 beans. You know, I think the best thing I can do is. Um, beans, are good for your heart. So wait, she's underneath. Yes. Gosh, it's darn just it, this Talise. clump of of corpses that she is um, crushed beneath. Why would you have to go underneath the porch? Oh, uh, she's not underneath the porch. Oh, okay, okay, she's on top of the porch, so I can no, see. No, I'm her. on the yard. I'm, she's on I'm the yard. Hi. On... Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, one, two. Three. But she's. Mm-mm been swallowed by the fist. Yeah, you can't see. So I think I'm under shit. I could make it up here to Uggy Zombie Guy. Good. It um, looks like maybe if you hurt a lot. Uh... Uh, make an athletic check. Let's see how well you hurdle the railing there. Well, I'm extremely athletic. So... I can't wait to see this. 21. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> impressive. <laughs> well, everyone's impressed. Um, so I will uh, use this opportunity to engage uh, Wave with this creepy icky. And I'm just going to hit it with Wave. Um, do, 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 boop, 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 boop. I want to make sure there's nothing else cool I can do with Wave before I just hit it. And no, I don't think there's anything extra I can do necessarily. So uh, 21 to hit. Definitely hits. All right, so that would be a... Nine damage? Nine damage, yeah. Um, And then I get to do an extra attack. And so I will do that again. A 14 to hit. 14 hits. <laughs> Yay. And that's 13 points of damage. So 22 okay. points of damage total. Anything else for Soraya? Ooh, I forgot that on each hit, I get to roll a 1d4 because of my uh, divine radiance with my weapon. You can also oh, nice. smite if you want. So, oh, yeah, that's smart. Um, so for the first one, it's 13 points of damage total. Uh Because I rolled a four. Yep, added another four, and I'll add that to thank you very much. Okay, Um, so then 14 and 15, 29, and yeah, I will Divine Smite if I still can. Yeah, 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 on that second one, go ahead. Dope. Okay, let's see. Where is it on my sheet? Divine Smite. Surprise, it's undead. What? What? Oh, okay, how do I do this? So extra damage two d eight. Oh, I have to cast it for my spells. Hadoi. It's been a minute. Thanks That's for good. bearing uh, with me, guys. Just mark out the spell slot. What what level spell slot are you using for this? Um, I'm gonna use a second level spell slot. Okay, so roll four d eight. Dope. Thank you, Peter. Twenty. Damn, extra that's points. a good smite. So forty nine points of damage total. Wow. Well done. Get out of here, Very punk. Well Get out of here, pug. <laughs> you, Breon, you hear that rallying cry, but I need you to make a constitution <laughs> saving throw at the start of your turn. Yeah, such a rallying cry. Get out of here, pug. The stench <laughs> is horrific oh. on this thing. Oh, I've got to make one. Yeah. Oh, did, okay. Did everyone else have to then? Nope, you are the first one to start your turn with. Sorry, I moved away from you so you don't get advantage. Okay, so Conse. Right. He's within the radius. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. On the, on the. All right. He's not uh, in the radius suffer... on my map, but maybe. No I'll ill pass. effects from it. Yeah, my own problem. Okay. Um, okay. I trust you. I will move to there. And Eolac will fly in. And I'm using my trident now. Okay, so you just... Um... No, I'll use this battle axe. I don't... I mean, I don't... 
It's clearly magical in some way, yeah? It is, yeah. Okay. I'll use it for now. Uh, crit. Nice. Uh, this is this is a... So I'm casting Booming Blade. So this is Booming Blade. Okay. That's my first action all the time. So he's two-handed. Which is 16. And... Oh, God. Why don't I make, just make this easier? Hang on. Ignore that. So... 16. So... Plus another nine for the critted. Okay. And then let me just roll one extra d8 in case it moves. So if it moves, it takes 13. Um, okay. okay, so that's the first attack with the booming blade. The second attack, and obviously if it's about... Oh, another crit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is like Monday night. Wait a oh minute. Oh my god, I just can't believe that. 15. How many crits in a row have you rolled? In That's two. I, obviously, I rolled a twenty-two just now, so um, so it's fifteen damage. Yep. And then I'm going to action surge. Uh, 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 and then roll the battle axe again for uh, sixteen to hit. Uh, 16 hits. The action surge, you don't get another bonus action, do you? You get a full multi-attack, but... Oh, I do, yeah. So it's just, it is basically just an extra two attacks. Nine. 24 to hit. Uh-huh. And another nine. And that was a... What was the... It was 15 from the crit? 15 from the crit, and then another 18. That is... It's looking... It's 18, uh, it is falling apart in front of you. <laughs> 33. Uh, uh, 42. 52. 58 damage. Yeah. It's barely hanging on, but it's doing so menacingly. All right, Talise, you feel the little zombie bits gnawing at you Great. under there. Thanks. And take 12 points of necrotic damage at the start Thanks. of your turn. Awesome. What do you do? <laughs> I had a plan and I realized the plan would not work. Um. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't think I can do that. I realized my brilliant plan was not going to work, so I'm going to have to rethink my brilliant plan. Um, does the clump of zombies on me count as one creature? It counts as an object. Cool! Why would you do this to me? <laughs> Dear zombies. What did I ever do to you other than hate you? Frick. <sighs> They're hating you right back. I know, it's so rude. I don't appreciate it. Don't they have manners? <sighs> shite, 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 shite. What's she doing, Talise? Besides I'm... getting eaten. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing. I would like to, I'm just gonna, um, I would like to cast Thunder Wave. You can do that. You can do that. I would like to do that. Um, I just probably a very good it. spell. Did you say it's not a very good spell? I said it's probably a very good spell to I cast. Like, how, a... how dare you send zombies after me and then insult my tiny plan. All right, any other special effects I should know about Thunderwave? No. Okay, you deal eight points of damage to it. You feel them sort of burst out just a bit and then continue to slump back, unless there are other effects, like I said, but. 
Well, is it unsecured? It is a large unsecured object. So an unsecured object within the area, which is right around me, it gets pushed 10 feet away from me. Okay. What direction are you pushing it? I would like to push it. Let me get my right thing here. I would like to push it like away from me and slightly away from the group. Okay. I was hoping you were going to say on to well, I the know cleric. what you were. Yeah, let me send it on to That's the That's fine. You can push it That's to there fine. and actually that force I I think that works. You push it away, it blows away and just kind of slops down there. Am I am I still restrained? You are not any longer. You are Yay! Um, you're all better. <laughs> Yay. I got better. I got better. Uh, all right. You can feel free to use your little bit of movement if you want. Otherwise, it's going to be Moriah's turn. Yeah. Yui. Uh, that's not pretty. I will uh, step. Let's see. Yeah, sure. Um, let's step this way. Wow, that is the ugliest thing I've seen in well, several days. Um, hey, you're really fucking ugly. Nice. <laughs> um, Was that aimed towards me? You're gorgeous. <laughs> Actually, that's a bardic inspiration, so you should take that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It, you can you suck. see it. You're awesome. Its collective head just sort of <laughs> twitches around a little bit. <laughs> eh, that's the warm up. We'll get to the good shit later. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm done. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Um. Daenerys. Alrighty. Am I in any? Am I in anywhere that would be considered any type of coverage? No. These little viney things. Um, they kind of weave their way around, but it would be, um, it wouldn't be concealment. Okay. <clears throat> that won't work. And getting you have to go prone to go under the porch itself. Yeah, we're not. We're no, not doing that again. Mm -mm. So I'm going to take my short bow and blast that bad boy. Hopefully. So anyway. Oh my god. What's in that one? That's an eight to hit. Sorry, Aniris. Any movement? <sighs> no. I'm good. Neither. All right, Nether is going to look out with uh, Tall's eyes, who flies out and goes, Ugh! and shoots two Eldritch Blasts at it. Zip. That's a hitting AC 11. That'll be a miss. And AC 13. 13's going to do it. Eight points of force damage, and then Dahl is going to shoot it with a little tiny arrow. <laughs> <laughs> it takes two points of damage. Wow. As Dahl shoots a critical hit That's and appears awesome. above um, Inaris. Mm. From. Um, Coming out of invisibility and then flies back here. That is Nether's turn. All right. Um, big zombie clot turn. Um, is going to well. Let's see if it gets its ability back. If it even uses it, doesn't get its ability back. So it's gonna just slam a fist down on both. Uh. uh 
Prion and Sarayan. Oh, I'll take it back attack of opportunity then. Nice. Want to hit Sarayan? Seventeen. Uh, seventeen hits for five damage. Wow. Nice. Uh, Sarayan. Shoot. Uh, Prion, I've got a twenty-three, and Sarayan, I have a sixteen. Hits me. Sixteen does not hit. Ooh. All right, Prion. Then we'll take. 21 points of bludgeoning damage as the fist lands down on top of you. And as it does, with that attack of opportunity, and thanks to your allies, um, you feel the the flesh come down on top of you, and you see you wake up and look up. The creature is slowly slumping over and sinking back into the ground into a bunch of corpses. Simultaneous damage. Oh, but nice. The attack of opportunity is enough to slay it. And the house groans ever so slightly. And that's about, and uh, otherwise goes quiet. Prion, you have a pretty axe. It feels good in your hand. It feels I really, really good, hope in fact. you found something that uh, sort of, you know is worth all of that. Yeah, you feel yourself you can feel the magic beginning to, you know, like if you held on to this for a while, you'd continue to attune to it and it feels feel healthier like it's like you're would be bolstered by it. Like you could take more damage, like you could take more hits, keep on fighting and it probably has a plus to um attack and damage as well. Hmm. Ah, yeah, I found this axe. It's definitely magical. I can feel it. Right. No idea what it is, though. I'll keep um, hold of it for now. Unless someone's going to use an axe. You're not going to catch me wielding something like that. I'm good with waves. Cut off my own um. foot with it. Aye. Not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep the large shower objects away from you, shall we? So, give her a little pat on the shoulder. So that was a thing. I'm gonna do a second wind. Oh my god. That's pretty gross. What a second wind. Yeah. There it is. I click on it. Second wind. Huh? Oh, nice. <laughs> 15 <Jesus>. back. <laughs> Wow. A particularly pungent second wound. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I am sorry about that. I feel better um, now, though. Then be sorry. <coughs> Feeling <Smells> satisfied. <laughs> don't don't make me don't make me gust just to clear out the air a bit, guys. Um, feeling satisfied that they're all not in imminent danger. Kind of wander back into the room that has the spirit board in it. Um, and seeing Nether behind me, I sort of nod my head towards it. Got any questions for it? You muted. Well, I suppose I want to see what you all saw. You could take a crack at it. Maybe Doll could lend a hand. It's just the one question, though, right? Maybe we should wait for the others. Despite the imperious portraits sort of looming down and staring at this table in the center of the room, um, and despite the very occult nature of some of the things scattered across the table, this room feels more comfortable than the rest of the house. Everything has felt uneasy and strange, creaky floorboards, crumbling tile, and just that, that just hair-raising sense of perpetual uneasiness has pervaded the house. But in here, you feel oddly all right, despite the fact that you may have just been communing with spirits. Hmm. Well. Nether 
says under her breath, um, she casts a spell. She casts some fey, she says, Tuatha Tel Luanda Tuatha, and appearing in a cloud of green leaves is Gadrazan, the beaver. <laughs> I give him a small little bow in greeting. <laughs> do you speak Sylvan? I do. You look better with pointy ears. Um, I, I pull some of my hair back, revealing pointed ears. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> um, there's nothing here to kill. And Nether says, I think we're going to be doing something a little different. And she puts her hand on the plaget, has Dahl put his little hand on top of hers, and has Gadrazan put his sort of big paw on top of um, Dahl's. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> What are the rest of you doing while uh, Nether is having a tea party with his summons, with her summons? Excuse me. I'm um, standing right next to I will walk in with the axe and almost present it to the room. If there's a ghost, a ghost-like figure in here, a presence yeah. rather. If this was something that's it was trying to tell us to get. just kind of feel just the the, the weight of the axe the, the power that it possesses is kind of growing within you, you feel it and that's about it um, as the rest of you walk in too and neither as you just as you're about to start doing this and as uh, Mariah you're kind of instructing him, you guys smell something nice Something sweet, pleasant. There's a cupcake on the uh, hearth. Has that always been there? Like, nope. Was that cupcake there? Cool. Catcher said. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Um. Mm -hmm. gonna, how was, I'm how gonna was drink, the I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink my healing potion. <laughs> just, yeah. I'm just gonna drink my healing potion before anything else happens. <laughs> Gadgers and uh, murmurs something to you in Sylvan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you speak Sylvan? Rude. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's just trying to connect. Oh, that was a lot of swear words your princessy mouth just uttered. What? I, I have like one or two lessons in Sylvan with someone who came through our town. Yeah, go wash your mouth out with soap. Oh, no. no. <laughs> so as you all place your hands on the, the planchet, it's... um. It's very noisy in the room at the moment with everything going on. Um, a little bit hard to focus. And um, so you don't feel anything at the moment, but as your allies, you know, um, sit there for uh, just a minute, you, you do begin to feel a presence as the room grows cold. Um, and you sense the three presences once again that your allies described. So there's a warrior oh. there's a woman with a apron and then there is a, a there's the man with the axe the man, man with, with the axe, axe right mm -hmm. woman with the apron and one other woman with the apron the person the woman in silver armor and the man with the axe um am i getting any sort of a uh impression as to what their names could be um no you just feel the presence that's it 
they stand. Do they have any particular expression? Um, no, you can't... It, it, it's not like... It's, it's not like you can see a... Like a, a physical body standing there. It's almost like you're aware that there's something looking over your shoulder. And there's almost like you're... You, there's almost a third eye sense to this once you let yourself be drawn in and you just see almost like a silhouette of a this person standing just behind you. And we've... They do remind me, they asked the question of the man with the axe and the woman with the apron. Mm-hmm. Another will focus on the woman with the armor. How can we help you? Free me. Okay. Um, do Doll and uh, Gadrazel also get asked? Sure. Yeah. All right. Gadrazel sort of the silly <laughs> licks his teeth together and the form of the beaver sort of shimmers a little bit and for a moment you all see a um the fey entity the fey spirit that nether has summoned that takes the form of a beaver is actually much more than that. It's uh, just a sort of a squat, stocky looking creature that has a somewhat green skin, long hair that sort of goes all the way down the waist, sort of like sort of a, a wild old man. And then Gadrazel focuses on the woman with the... Um, as a... I'm sorry, it may have been unclear. Once you sort of make the connection with the one, the others kind of disappear. Oh, disappear. Got it. Okay. Where are you trapped? Below. And above the within. Below and above and within. And then Dahl will think telepathically if he can. Why should we free you? I can help you. And then can Nether hear that? Yes, all three of you. Can Nether make a insight check uh sure I'm gonna use my uh, advantage on this if I may my inspiration <laughs> well that's two sixes 
And it's a ghost, you know, it's a little... It's a ghost! <laughs> but as as you ask that, or as you, you kind of think about that, your thoughts are interrupted by the planchet moving again. This time in slow, deliberate movements. You worry that that's actually going to carve um, ruts into the board as it slides across, as it spells out the words evict the uh oops evict the chimney witch <clears throat> and you hear a little puff of fire behind you and extending out from the fireplace you see an arm oh. dropping a small miniature bite-sized pie on the mantle following it you're trying to follow the arm to the body and you see this long fingered arm dropping a pastry and you see one elbow two elbows three elbows four elbows just this arm with way too many joints just zip its way back up the fireplace and the smell of a beautiful baked pie lingers in the room and that is where we'll nope. leave off for I don't know don't, don't, don't you do that to me tonight. bye